I was about to sign the contract to go play in Armenia. My coach talked me out of it. Came back to my senior year. It was the worst year of basketball of my entire life. So now the girl I thought I was going to marry broke up with me. Basketball, the one thing that my entire life I worked for, completely shot. I was riding around doing Uber and Lyft just so I could be with someone because I felt so alone and I hated what was going on in my mind when I was by myself. This week, I'm honored to be joined by co-host of The Journey Podcast, Zach Cummings. I think it's important to highlight Jake's role in all of this. Jake and I had this conversation the other day. We didn't plan any of this. People we've met, the rooms we've been in just because of this podcast. Bob Menery, I immediately brought up, I'm like, yo, I have more likes than Ed Milet and Bradley Martin and Bob's like, yo, yo, that shit doesn't matter. Why are you doing this? Ask yourself that. That's all that you need to worry about. I felt like I've always been a little bit closed off since the passing of my mom. 357 tatted right here. I've seen this time every single day since she died. It's just something that I can look at every day, you know, and remember that she's with me and uh, that I have a why. All the years that you've been with your dad now. How important has his bond with you been? He told Jake he learned more about me on this podcast than he did in my 26 years of living. I was really battling some shit on the inside that nobody knew about. This podcast, just very fortunate that like he supports me. But I told him, I'm like, yo, like give me a couple of years, like I'm gonna buy you a house. Like, don't worry. <laughs> I, I was joking about how I got introduced to you before we started going. And uh, it yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. finding like a TikTok clip or anything like that. It was when I was starting to think of names for my own show. I was like, oh, you know, the journey would be like a fire name. And I looked it up and I was like, ah, oh, damn, it's already taken. <laughs> and, then, and then I started watching your videos. I was like, not only is it taken, but they're actually pretty good at this. <laughs> and then, so this is longer in the in the coming than I uh, would like to admit. I've been I've been watching for like eight, nine months now. And I've just been following wow. your guys' journey. Um, Appreciate that. Hey, anytime, bro. Anytime. You guys are killing. And I, I think... The journey is a perfect name. I mean, I loved it. And I think it perfectly suits what you're doing too, because to me, this point in our lives, especially our twenties is a journey. Like it's going to take mm -hmm. turns. It's going to go everywhere and everywhere. And you, you don't know where it's going to go. It's not a race. It's not a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a journey. You got to take your time. You got to really embrace it. Um, and where I, where I want to pick up your journey is before your twenties. I want you to take me back to West 11th. I want you to take mm. me back to that time. And, you know, at that point in your life, there's no reason for love at that point. Like you just love what you love and what you loved at that point was basketball. So yeah. can you just tell me about how basketball, especially when you fell in love with the game, how did that transform you as a person and how have you carried those same ideals into this point in life? Mm. Yeah. So, okay. So you did your research. Yeah. So <laughs> West 11th, West 11th was a park by my house that I, uh, I grew up playing at it was uh, I didn't play much high school basketball. I didn't play much AAU basketball, but I was always at the park. Yeah. And when I first started going, I mean, I'm bro, I was the only white kid there every time. I'm the only white kid there. Right. And like in basketball culture, as, 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 as the only white dude out there, you got to prove yourself. Yeah. So I, uh, I certainly had to prove myself. I wouldn't get picked up and, uh, it would frustrate me because I knew I was talented. I knew I was like, bro, I'm like the best dude here. And like, yeah. dude's just not, you know what I'm saying? But then like, and then like once guys started to realize, oh, like he could play a little bit, like dudes would even go harder at me because it's just like, that's just the basketball culture. Like white dudes are soft, they're slow, they can't guard, you know? So like they want to yeah. go at me. So like, it was cool. But then once you earn respect, like in the street basketball culture, like you've earned their respect, you know? Yeah. So that was just a place uh, for me to like grow up and I was a baseball player, football player, and then basketball was my third sport. Got hurt in both where I really couldn't play anymore. And I just took over basketball. Basketball was also my mom's favorite sport that she liked to watch me play. Baseball was too slow for her. Football was too dangerous. Basketball was just enough action and safe. Yeah. So, um, man, I fell in love with it. I, uh, it was just something for me as a 12, 13 year old, I was watching Dev in the lab, 10,000 hours. Yeah. And I was obsessed with it. I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. And cause it was something that like, I could always go work on football. Yeah. I couldn't work on. Like I played quarterback if, you know, I would need receivers. I would need, you know, real most more often you need equipment, baseball, you can go to the batting cage, but it's really not the same. Like basketball, I could just, and and I had a lot going on mentally at the time because I was dealing with the loss of my mother. Yeah. So that was my escape. Like basketball for me was my escape from reality where I could be in my own world and 
I could talk to myself and then all the bullshit that was going on in my life, like it went away. Yeah. And that's really where it started. And then West 11th was a place that I just, I would go every single day after school and we would play until the sun went down. If it was snowing, we'd shovel the basketball courts. Yeah. If we had, if the leaves were on the court, we would rake it and I'd bring, I'd bring a leaf blower there, like whatever it took, like we were going to play basketball. So um, West 11th was certainly the start to like my basketball career. And uh, it really created a, a toughness in me that I don't think I would have got anywhere else. Yeah, I, I feel you so much on that. I was hearing you talk about, you know, playing when you were a little kid with your friends like Chris and Albert. And it reminded me, my West 11th is a, is a baseball field. It's called Apar Field when my hometown where I would mm -hmm. go with my friends and it would be the same kind of thing. You know, rain or shine, we'd be out there just having fun. Baseball was my basketball. Like that was my escape. And, you know, you just fall in love with like the simplest things when you're a kid. And it's those simple things that are like the most extraordinary things in life. And when you really embrace them, that's when life just becomes so full and you just feel so much joy every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad basketball was that for you. And I, I know your journey with basketball wasn't exactly a straight line. There was a lot of movement mm -hmm. and geographically too. I mean, you're playing all across the country, a kid from Long Island going down to like Texas, Louisiana, uh, the Virgin Islands. And yep. again, that simplicity and it becomes so complex so quick. There's so many moving parts and you start to lose sight of the little things that made, in this case, basketball just so enticing and, it, and just enthralling. When you're mm -hmm. going around the country at this point in your life and you're seeing how other people are living and you're really getting introduced for the first time to outside of the bubble of you know the New York metro area, is there anything particularly that stuck out about how other people lived that either surprised you in a pleasant way or <laughs> not so pleasant way? Uh, anything that you adopted into your own personal lifestyle? Um, after seeing, you know, this is what life is like outside of my own little bubble. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, first school I went to was Lawson State in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and it was uh, it was in the hood. Like it was really in like a bad part of Birmingham. Projects right across the street. Um, we know a high school right next door. Like very good basketball school, but just like it's it's in a it's in a rough area in Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, and I remember, I remember like, I don't know, the first day, first day I got there, um, there was a few guys that were a little, mind you, I'm the first white player in school history, Damn. school history. <laughs> so um, it was a, it was a little bit of a culture shock for them to see like a white dude around playing basketball, you know, cause like it just wasn't it just wasn't a thing down there, like, especially in Birmingham. So I remember, I remember one time, like after like a couple of weeks there, uh, this, like one of my teammates came up to me and was like, yo, like, you're actually pretty cool. He's like, I didn't know, I didn't know white people were that cool. Yeah. And, uh, or he goes, I didn't know, like there was white people that were cool because <laughs> down there, there's a lot of just like, you know, racism yeah. and, uh, you know, like, that's that bro that's sad you know that's sad yeah. that like there is people like there is parts of this country that you know people of, of of the opposite skin color or minority groups they 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 didn't even know that cool white people or nice white people existed because of how they've been treated in the past yeah. and uh that was just like a humbling moment for me and like an eye-opener of like hey like i'm very fortunate and blessed to be able to be from new york and, and come from a very diverse area and be raised the right way yeah. and uh that that was certainly one moment that stuck out um, at my first school. And then obviously just, just being down south in general, Louisiana, Texas, um, it's just a culture shock. You know, like we're from the northeast, you know, it's, it's, it's totally different. But the hospitality down there is great. Uh, the food down there is really good. Um, and it was uh it was something that like after two or three weeks go by like you're used to it you know what i'm saying like you know where all the food's at like you know where if you got to get this like you know where the stores are at you're understanding the road you don't got to use jeep so it was cool like it was it was it was awesome for me like i had no problem bouncing around everywhere and, and, and just changing schools and doing that because for me it was like yo like I, I have no reason to be here like there's no there's no reason for me to to be here right now like yeah so i was just kind of just taking it all in um and uh and then yeah and then obviously the virgin islands was a a completely different uh 
different world. It's a, uh, it's a third world country. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not like the United States. Uh, it's a nice place to go on vacation if you're living on like a nice resort, but yeah. to live there full time is, uh, it was tough, bro. That was a, that was a tough adjustment. That was another very humbling experience because, uh, it made me grateful for a lot of the simple pleasures that we have here in the States because, yeah. uh, they're just not, they're not really accessible there, especially at, at school at the university of Virgin Islands. So yeah. that was, that was an experience. And I, I wish I was able to, I wish I, I wish I was able to experience it now. Cause now that I'm 26, I was there when I was 21. Yeah. Um, I would appreciate it a lot more cause now I'm a lot more into nature and like, exploring like i, w- I would have went all over the island and like climbed and jumping off rock like i would have done that stuff back then i was just like basketball 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 and then i got yeah. hurt so then yeah. i was just like miserable because i'm like yo like my living situation sucks and i can't play basketball like i need to get yeah. out of here so i was only there for like two months and oh, wow. uh and then i left yeah if, even though you might not be able to go there right now do you still take that same mentality into anywhere that you're going maybe you're traveling for the podcast you always try to carve out some time explore whatever city you're in or try to go on like a nice hike or something like that? Or is it, you know, you've just been focused on the craft for so long that you're still kind of not in touch with that side of you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I haven't, um, as far as travel for the podcast, we've, we've went to Miami a few times and then, uh, we've done Boston for Bob Mennery and Boston, you know, we went around downtown. I've been in Boston multiple times. And then, uh, yeah, we, yeah, of course, explore, try food. Yeah. Um, and then in Miami, you know, like I stayed, uh, I stayed in downtown for a little while and then I stayed in South beach. And then, you know, some people typically think of Miami as like this party scene and like the lifestyle. And it's, I mean, it's really what you make of it. Like yeah. I don't do any, I really don't do any of that stuff. So for me, like South beach was like peaceful. Like I could go to yeah. South point park and like watch the sunset and be on the water and like meditate and, and, you know, walk around and, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, yeah. So yeah, we definitely, um, yeah, we, we have, we really have plans of, uh, of living very uh, mobily of like not settling down anywhere. And like, we want to do a U.S. tour where we live in a bunch of different cities, like for like a month or two at a time. I love that. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's one of my things I really want to do. I definitely want to travel the world and explore because uh, there's just so much out there. And I'm like, so some, I'm just over New York at this point. You know, I've been here I'm for insane. too long. I know. Yeah, I, I feel you. And I, I'm really happy to hear that because especially in the medium that you're operating in, that door opens up where you can start doing mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And if you're not taking full advantage of it, uh, I, I feel like that would be a wasted opportunity. I love to hear that you and Jake are, are doing that. Uh, yeah. Just that opportunity and getting that opportunity, you know, making the dream possible. The only thing that's going to stop you is that fear of failure, right? And basketball, especially, you're at Lids, you're at Foot Locker, sending hundreds if not thousands of emails out to coaches every single day Mm -hmm. asking for a shot multiple times. And, you know, most people would stop maybe at one, (laughs) not even do one, not even two. And yet here you are going until you either get a yes or you get a told, please stop sending me emails. (laughs) How does that seem podcasting? Because I know for me, you know, a little bit of behind the scenes action, you know, you responded to my first email and thank God you did because I would have sent you like 30 more. (laughs) (laughs) But when you take that same mentality into podcasting now, whether it's, you know, going out for a new business partner, going out for a new guest. How do you keep that same mindset with you that, you know, the only person that's going to stop me from failing to get to the next step in our evolution as podcasters, as artists is going to be me. So, so Jake and I have a, uh, we have a saying and we say it all the time and it's, uh, it's very simple. It's, we don't lose. Yeah. And there, there's just nothing that's going to stop us. And, and there was, there was nothing that was going to stop me when I was a kid from really achieving or pursuing what I wanted to do, because I was like, I know I'm capable of it. Like I've always felt something within me of like, Hey, like you can really do anything you want in this life. It's up to you, whether you want to put the work in, put the effort in, put the time in. And that was something for me that, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I think some people are born with it and some people just don't have it. But that was something for me that I've always had that 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 feeling within me of like, yo, I'm gonna get this done. You know, I'm gonna do this no matter what, like until until you tell me no, right? Or until until like I, I hit I hit the end of the road and then I gotta, you know, turn and break off to a new path. Yeah. So yeah, all of that, all of that definitely like as a kid and then as a teenager and trying to pursue like a college basketball career and and get a scholarship when like, I really didn't have much experience. Uh, 
yeah, I've carried all that with me of just this like resiliency of like, no matter what I put my mind to, like, I truthfully think I can do it. So yeah, it's just been something that uh, I think I was born with. I think I was just born with uh, an intuitive feeling that anything you put your mind to, like in this life, like it's, it's really attainable. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know a lot of people, they'll try to point the blame towards other people and say like, Oh, you know, this factor didn't go my way and that's why I can't achieve what I want to achieve right now. And they'll try to look for some external source as to the reason why they have a roadblock in their life. Meanwhile, I think Mm -hmm. there's a lot of times that it's just, we don't take ownership for certain things that we can control. And we try to externally put that blame on other things when we should be looking Mm -hmm. inward to see, okay, you know, what can I control? Like what's truly in my control and how can I go about doing that? You know, one of those things to me is other people's voices. And I think, you know, there's a lot of times where everyone seems to have a clear idea about like how we should live, but they never have a clear idea about how they should live themselves. Like they don't take any mm. responsibility for themselves. And I, I think podcasting is a unique medium where you're conversing with so many people that have incredible stories and very diverse backgrounds, but you're not really talking to them to try to change their perspective on anything or kind of put a rhetoric on them. You're more learning from them. And I think that there definitely is this path that you take with podcasting where you allow other voices to impact your own life in a positive way instead of hearing them and allowing them to impact in a negative light. Do you think there's yeah. anything that's stuck out from a conversation you've had over the past couple of months, especially that you've taken away and it's changed the trajectory of how you go about operating your day to day? Yeah, I think so. As far as guess, um, like you said, like sometimes it's hard and, you know, as guests, like we're really trying to put out the best content. Um, so we're really trying to ask like viral questions or, or like dig deep into like a personal story and bring out a side of them that, that maybe no one's ever seen before. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think there's like really like a piece in every single episode that, that I can really take from like, even like my boy, John, who lost, he lost his mom, his dad and his dog in a span of three months. And like, uh-huh. I had to sit there and I just gave him the floor and like, I just had to listen to him. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, like, you know, like, yeah, my mom died, you know, but like this dude just lost his entire world in three months. Yeah. So like, I got, I got, I gained like a piece of, you know, just gratitude from that of like, yo, be happy for like where you're at right now. Cause shit could be a lot worse. Uh, Bob Menery talked to us about, you know, because I, I immediately brought up, I'm like, yo, I have more likes than Ed Milet and Bradley Martin and The Pivot. And I'm naming all these big time shows that I have more views than and more likes than on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And and Bob's like, yo, yo, that shit doesn't matter. You know, he was like, who who gives a fuck? He goes, when you get into a rat race of, yo, I got more than this or this followers and this. He was like, bro, you're going to drive yourself insane. He was like, mm-hmm. yo, just just do, why, why are you doing this? Yeah. Ask yourself that. And then that's that's all that you need to worry about. Like what got you here? And then I was like, yeah, you're right. And I was like, you know what? That you, you are right about that. I need to stop worrying about that. Because like Jake and I were so emotionally attached to the numbers and TikTok and because that's all we really had. Yeah. And then over time, we're just like, we just kind of detached from the results. So to say that was, you know, that was something that I definitely gained something from. Um, and then even we just had on JNR Choi. He just, uh, he has that song to the moon. It was like yeah, the number one yeah. song in the world, bro. Like, and there, there was a lot of things that I, that I got from him of just maybe, maybe things that I was already, I was already open to, I was already, I was already aware of, but sometimes you need to be reminded. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think bro, and a lot of our podcasts, but I think the ones like I gain the most value from are our, are our internal episodes. Yeah. And because not only, not only am I learning from Jake, but I'm also learning a lot about myself. And when you are on a podcast, time goes away. There's no phones. There's no distractions. And uh, for me, it's a form of therapy. And uh, you can go back and watch episodes. And I, I'll say things and I'll talk about things that I didn't even know I was feeling. But yeah. just because I was so present, it came out. Yeah. And I mean, bro, there were, there was times I broke down. Like I, the episode, episode 48, I, uh, I broke down. We, we started to, it was, it was right around, it was right around my mom's birthday. 
I just had a really bad breakup of, of a three year relationship and uh, I was feeling really fucking lost and came up about my mom and then boom, bro, Jake, Jake looked down, looked up. And next thing you know, I was just crying, you know, like I, I, I couldn't help it, but I wasn't crying because I was sad in that moment. I was crying because of all the years the shit was built up and I never spoke about it. Yeah. So the podcast is, you can learn. Yes, you can learn a lot from other people, but I've learned so much about myself during this podcast and I've become a whole, a totally different person that I didn't even know. I didn't even know I could speak like this, or I didn't know that I can leave an impact on people's lives the way that way that I have so far. Yeah. And uh, it's really just been an eye opening experience for me to like, to, to really just take all this in and, and, and be grateful for it because like, you know, I could be doing a lot of other things right now. And I'm, I'm really glad that like, this was the avenue that kind of chose me. When you have that experience and you let those emotions show and you know that you were on camera, is there any sense of, wow, like I shouldn't be showing this right now? Or are you just so present in the moment and it feels so freeing that you're comfortable enough to show these inner emotions that have been simmering for so long and now they're getting out there? And the response to that clip and that whole podcast was incredible. Just the amount of people that are showing you support. What does it feel like when you put that out there and you you see all these people that are just outpouring their love towards you and they're showing you that they're going to be with you no matter what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I, when I broke down, bro, I mean, I wasn't even, I wasn't thinking of anything. I wasn't yeah. thinking of what people thought of me. I wasn't thinking of how I'm going to be looked at. I wasn't going to think about a dude said, yo, you're soft. I wasn't thinking about, I wasn't thinking about anything. Yeah. I was really thinking about like, like, damn, like I've, I've held, I've held this shit in for so long. And I've never really spoke about it. And when you hold shit in long and for a long enough period of time, like that shit just builds up and builds up and builds up. And eventually like, bro, you explode. And yeah, uh, yeah I hit my breaking point. That, that was, that was, that was a moment for me that I real I needed to have. And, and the fact that it happened on camera and I was able to, to go back and watch it. Like when I went back and watched that episode um, and and I did the editing, bro, I was crying watching it, you know, like, yeah. um, it was uh yeah it was cool bro but like it it was it was cool to be able to to just let let go you know and just like surrender to what you're feeling cuz i i feel like i feel like a lot of the time as men like we want to compress and and hold everything that we're feeling inside because in society like we're told to be a man and be tough and like you have to just understand that like that's not feasible like that's not a way that you can it's not sustainable to live, to live a healthy life, to live a balanced life and like have a strong, like mental health. Um, yeah, just having strong mental health. Like you can't live your life like that. And I, I really got to the point where I was like, Hey, like I need to be able to talk to people. I need to stop holding things in and I need to just, just let go and just surrender how I'm feeling because you feel a lot more free after you talk about what's weighing heavy on your chest than trying to be the tough guy and like hold that shit in all the time. Like, because then, 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 then you end up like lashing out on people that, that don't deserve it. And, and, and then you make yourself look bad and, and, and you can ruin relationships that way too. Like friendships, relationships with your parents, intimate relationships, yeah. because you're, you're bringing all this shit, all this turmoil, all this trauma from your past. And you've, you haven't accepted it. You haven't let it go. You haven't learned from it. And now you're bringing that into present day relationships and you're bringing that and putting that into their life. And like, they don't deserve that shit, you yeah. know? And then, and then people wonder why relationships and friendships don't work out. And it's like, yo, because like you're carrying all this fucking baggage with you yeah. and you've never owned up to it. You've never faced it. Everyone just runs from their problems. Like, and, and, and the moment, the moment that you can face your problems, face your fears, face your trauma and just hit them head on or you're, you're just such a freer person, you know, like you, yeah. you, it's, it's a liberating feeling where like, you can just be like, all right, well, like I went through this shit, you know, I, I, I felt it, I accepted it and I can't change it. Like I can't change the past. I can't change the future. All I can do is just like be locked into this present moment. So yeah. And, and bro, I mean, all, like 
kudos to this to this podcast because like without like this form of release like i don't know if i would have ever got to that point to even yeah. have this like mental fortitude to be like hey like this is how like you should be living your life you know yeah i feel you 100 percent. i agree with you I, th- I think a lot of us i like to call us runners <laughs> where i don't think we're a lot of quitters uh, in our age group but we're definitely a lot of runners where the first sign of trouble, we like to retreat back to what we think is safe and what we think is comfortable. Mm-hmm. If that means not showing that side of us, that's comfortable. And I think it's yeah. only doing us a disservice by doing that, by not mm-hmm. taking that step, not taking the steps to be brave. Uh, and I think it's important to highlight just Jake's role in all of this, where I think it's so special, the bond that you two have, especially amongst men, where you have another guy in your life who is willing to hear you in your best of times and in your worst of times. And not only does he listen to you, but he also knows when to respond and when not to respond, which I think is Mm -hmm. such a unique skill set. because so many times I think we get found, we find ourselves in a situation where we don't know what to say or if we should say anything at all. But the two of you just seem so comfortable with each other. And like you said, I love watching the episodes where it's just you two because the chemistry that you two have and the understanding that you two have of each other's emotions when you need to give someone another like another moment just to think, to breathe and stuff like that. It comes across and it's so evident. What do you think it is about Jake's character that just resonates with you so well that the two of you are able to form this relationship that goes, of course, there's a business element to it. Like you guys are partners in terms of this podcast, but it's more of a friendship and a brotherhood. And mm-hmm. it wasn't something that was existing when you guys were growing up. Like you guys knew each other, but you guys weren't the best of friends. How do you think you yeah. guys have been able to become better friends, stronger brothers later on in life? And how do you think other people our age can go about doing the same thing? Yeah, I think, I think the reason Jake and I work so well is because we're complete opposites. Uh, We balance each other out. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we complement each other very well, where it's like, I mean, if you, if you split it extrovert, introvert, I'm the introvert, Jake's the extrovert, right? Like Jake is the outgoing, the life of the party the celebrity right like like the the guy the the guy that wants to be in the light and uh, i'm i'm the opposite i don't really care about any of that stuff you know like i'm the guy like i like to be behind the scenes right i'm a little more monotone like i'm a little more reserved so if you had two of me it wouldn't work if you had two of him it wouldn't work so we kind of just found this and we found this flow during the podcast that's really just bro i mean it, it's it, it was just something that just happened like we didn't plan any of this like we we just shot an episode the other day and we were just like yo like it's really crazy to think like where we are like how far we've came like the people we've met the rooms we've been in just because of this podcast and yeah like we yeah we were friends growing up but uh you know we fell off he went to go play college football i went to go play college basketball it was always all love but the the day I brought I, I had him on as a guest on episode three yeah. and bro it just it just relit it just relit a spark a friendship that uh, we just clicked again and bro do we bump heads absolutely we still bump heads because Jake is a fucking he's crazy bro you know what I'm saying like he's yeah. all over the place he he'll just his phone it'll be off for the whole day when I need something you know what I'm saying like he's just he's so sporadic but like yeah. you just gotta love him bro because like he means well you know and like. He he is a he's a he's a really good dude, and uh, that's one thing. Like to like to finish. I think at the end of your question, you said like like how can people like find that? Mm-hmm. And it's like it's hard, bro. It's really hard to trust people nowadays. It's it's really hard to find really good, genuine, loyal people. And like when you yeah. do find people that are loyal and genuine, like keep them close and like don't lose them because man, like. I've been fucked over by a lot of people that like I thought I thought were gonna be with me till to the end of my life. And like yeah. I've lost best friends, fucking relationships have really went south. And uh it's really hard when, when you're in the moment to to think that that person would ever do you like that. Yeah. And then when that time comes and that person does you like that, it fucking hurts because like you put your all into them yeah. and they didn't reciprocate, you know, the way you treated them. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say like you just need to be a good judge of character and you need to really, really see people for like for who they are. And the best way to judge someone is not when things are good. You need to see what people's characters are like when shit hits the fan. 
because that's that's what shows people's true colors. Everyone's a good person when everything's going well. Okay. But the moment fucking bad things start to happen and there's stress and there's and there's some some fucking pressure on the line, that's when people's true colors come out and you want to surround yourself with people that are solid during those times because there's a lot of people that that look solid on Instagram and they and and they put on this front around people but like behind closed doors people aren't always who they say they are so yeah. just be careful just really be careful who you trust like yeah. but yeah Jake Jake is solid bro like that that's yeah. one that's I have I have probably like three or four people that I can like genuinely say like I could trust with my life and and Jake is certainly one of them it's a special thing to say I know I know a lot of people that can't even say they have one to say three or four yeah. is awesome hey yeah just thinking about like trusting people and going through those types of things you know, it reminds me of something like, you know, if something happens once, it probably won't happen again. But if it happens twice, it's surely going to happen a third time. And when you're trying to like judge character and you say, all right, yeah, this happened once, it probably won't happen again. But then someone does it a second time to you and you have to say to yourself, all right, do I keep giving more chances or do I finally, you know, become the wiser? And I say to myself, all right, it's time to, you know, end this relationship and it's hard. But I think even with ending relationships, one thing I've been trying to work on personally is forgiveness a lot. And not letting those, I don't even know if you want to call them failures, but those instances from the past creep into the now where I let my previous judgments of character impact how I uh, go about meeting new people and having this wall built mm. up immediately where I say to myself, like, you know, I'm Back. scared to trust now because I've been burned in the past. I don't want to do it. Do you have any thoughts on forgiveness particularly where do you think it's something that you've always been good at? Is it something that you've even thought about in terms of how it impacts your day-to-day -day choices? Like, are you always conscious of, you know, I, you might've been burdened in the past, but forgiveness is something that you need to do in order to be able to be the best version of yourself for that next relationship that might come along. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely, I, I've probably, I've honestly probably over forgived during my time. I've, I've always put, I've always put my pride aside and, I tried to be like just a nice guy a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've learned like when you do that, people will take advantage of you even more. Yeah. So it's, it's been that, that has been tough for me because there, there's been a lot of situations that I probably should have fucking cut ties with people and I didn't. And then I ended up getting burned again and you can forgive people, but you really can never forget because when people when people do you wrong it you, you have to take it personal you know you you have to take it personal because like you said like they'll do it again and there is times where where you where where people make honest mistakes and you should forgive them and uh but i i've really learned that there's there's not like if someone like I always say like if someone wanted to be in your life, they would never put themselves in jeopardy of losing you. Yeah. And if that person decides to do something that can potentially lead to you guys not being in each other's lives anymore, they, mm -hmm. they didn't value you enough. And I only really want to value people that value me. Like yeah. I'm not going to pour into people and give people my energy when it's not reciprocated because over a long enough period of time and you just give and give and give bro you're going to have nothing left when it's time when it's time to do something for yourself yeah and i i've done that way too much bro i'm, I'm always trying to like help people like i do it to a fault i got to do a better job of saying no you know like i run yeah. into people all the time and now that i have like i have like a little bit of leverage right like like i have i know what to do with a camera i, I understand tiktok like like there's a lot of values that I can provide in people's lives. Yeah. And I'm always like, I always want to like say like, Oh, yo, I can help you here. I can help you here because like, I'm just trying to be nice. Like, that's just the way I am when like, realistically, like bro, one, I don't have time Two, like, you're going to want me to do it for free. And three, like I probably should have just kept my mouth shut or said no, you know, because so, and then I've done that with people that have done me wrong. Right. Like I, I've, I've, I've put, I've been, I've been the bigger person, right? I forgave them. Right. And I gave them another chance and then they do it again. And then I'm like, okay, well, it's not that serious. And I mean, bro, honestly, like long, like long winded answer, but like, honestly, I learned that I learned that mentality from being a 12 year old who lost his mother and 
I really didn't know what was going on, but I knew that she wasn't here anymore. But I really didn't understand the true meaning and value of life. And as I got older, it really made me understand that like, yo, shit's not that deep. It's really not that serious. All the problems that you have in your life with people and, 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 you, and, you, allow, and you allow it to affect you and you allow it to carry on for days, it's just a waste, bro. Because like the time we have here is so limited and a lot of this petty shit that we stress over is it's, it's not going to mean anything. No, it so it's like when, when you have people that, that are really close to you, like let, let that shit go, bro. And, and, and really, and really just move on and, and, and hash it out because there is going to come a time where that person isn't there anymore. There is going to be a time where you're never going to be able to speak to them again. And uh, you don't want to have that, that feeling in your chest and in the back of your mind, like, damn, I could have, I could have approached this situation differently. And uh, now I have to live with, with the repercussions of my decision. So yeah, that was just something that that was stemmed to me as a kid where it's like, you know, it's just, it's not that deep. So yeah, I have, I have done forgiving a lot, but uh, I think that's something that a lot of people should, should focus on because too many people hold grudges that are uh, pretty unnecessary. I agree. I think we all do. And to, to your point there on when you have a good one, you know, you keep them around and, and I think I'm the same way where I try to be as selfless as I can, even if it's at the detriment of my own well-being. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I really don't think I regret any instance of doing that because to me, I want to be there for people as much as I can. And if that means taking away a little time for myself, I think at the end of the, at end of the day, I'll be all right with it. Mm-hmm. Do you, how do you go about showing love towards other people? Like, are you the type of person that will always say it to their face or is it something that, you know, when you're in the moment and you're just really feeling the gratitude of that moment, is it something that even comes out? Given love, honestly, has been something that I've, that I've really struggled with because Mm -hmm. I've felt like, like I've always been a little bit closed off since a kid, since, since the, the passing of my mom. And uh, that was something that, that kind of trickled in to a lot of my relationships. And uh, I think, I, think I, I need to do a better job of giving love and showing love because deep down, I, I do feel it. You know, I do really genuinely feel it. Yeah. But uh, I don't always know how to articulate it or express it the way that someone is able to receive it. Yeah. And that, that, that has affected friendships of mine. That has affected relationships of mine that has affected relationships with my own father because he's, he's the same way, you know, like we, uh, we, we, I think, I think a lot of people can do a better job of really just like giving love and showing love and just, it just, just being there for people, you know, like there's a lot of times, bro, like the happiest person in the room, the person that's laughing the most is the person that is fucking battling something that nobody knows about. Yeah. And they're and they're the ones that are hurting the most inside, the, the loudest, most fun people in the room. Like those are the people you should check on, you know, yeah. and then check on other people as well, you know, because you really never know what what anyone is going through. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it's hard. You know, we we're, we're in this we're in this cycle, like like on this journey. Right. And, and we're all just like we we're so consumed with what we have going on in our lives and. And yes, you should, you should put yourself first, but we all do have enough time to give love and, 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 and make sure people are all right, especially the people around you, you know, especially the people closest to you, because, uh, man, bro, life, life is scary, bro. And that shit could be gone like that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, we don't think about it. No one does. Anyone listen to this, me, you, none of us really, really are grateful for like all the shit that we have. Like, look at what we're doing right now. You know what I'm saying, bro? Uh-huh. I got fucking lights everywhere. You got the setup, the mic with your logo on it. We're sitting here on MacBook. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, know, we don't I even think like about this shit. It's just part of it. But it's like, it's bro, great. like, no. you could walk outside and all that shit could be gone tomorrow. That shit yeah. could be gone like that. And, bro, it's hard, bro. It's so hard. It's so easy to come up here and, t- and say that. But, man, like, gratitude is something that I, I need to do a better job of because I'll find myself complaining a lot about, like, petty bullshit that, like, you know, bro, there's there's kids around the world that they don't have fresh water. They don't have fucking food. They don't know where their next meal is. They're, they're, they're getting bombed from fucking 
different countries, you know, and they're losing their whole family in, 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 in a split second. And like, we're sitting here like, bro, the Wi-Fi is not fucking <laughs> the Wi-Fi is down. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah, bro. It's, uh, but yeah, but this is what's cool about like podcasting. Cause now, cause like it, it makes you think about this shit. Cause we're, we're in the present moment. We're not looking at the phone. We're not on social media. Like, yeah. so like sometimes it brings out like what's truly on your mind. And like, this is the shit that I like, I really feel, but I, I don't, I don't do it enough. I know. I feel you, man. I do. Um, and it, it, I want to bring up something that you've said on two occasions and it's been a different answer each time. And it kind of comes into talking about like gratitude purpose. And, you know, when you're trying to talk about like, Oh, I want to fulfill my obligation of being a person. And to me, Mm -hmm. you know, fulfilling that obligation is being the best person that you could possibly be towards others. And when you talk about that and (laughs) the bear with me, because it's a bit, a bit of a connection. So three years ago, you were on a podcast. I think it was one of your own podcasts. And one of your friends asked you, where do you think you'll be in five years? And you responded, I think I'm going to be exactly where I need to be. You were asked that same question a couple of months ago. And you gave a different answer to the question. And you're talking about just the pod was something that was just so important to you. You said five years time, you think, you know, the pod's going to be this massive thing that you're going to take on. And you're going to take it as far as you can, as long as God's with you that whole time. And I just thought hearing those two answers was so just like amazing because you couldn't really give like a solidified answer that first time around and you didn't really know where that was going to be. And now it sounds like Mm -hmm. at least at this point in your life, you have found what has gotten you going and what gives you purpose, what gives you meaning. Can you just talk about, you know, what it feels like now to have that kind of purpose and also the religious aspect of it to feel that relationship with God every time that you're doing a podcast where you feel that strength running through you and you feel his presence and you know that, you know, this might not be the best episode that I do. This might not be the best conversation, but I know that no matter what, like, I know he's got me. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I'm, I'm just very fortunate, um, to be able to, to have such an easy transition from basketball ending to podcasts taking off like i had a, i had a crazy junior year of basketball like i mean i was top five in the country in a bunch of offensive categories i i, I mean bro, I, I did whatever you know what i'm saying like i had a crazy year yeah. and uh i was about to go play professionally and i was about to sign the contract to go play in armenia and I, my coach talked me out of it, brought me back. I came back to my senior year. It was the worst year of basketball of my entire life. From coaching AAU, we went 3-28, and 28, oh right, God. coaching. And I'm pouring my fucking heart out into these kids. And I went 3-28, and 28, so I'm losing all summer. Then I go into my college basketball season, and I have the worst year of basketball of my life. My girlfriend breaks my heart. I step away from the team for th- fucking three weeks. I was going to quit the team until my dad forced me to go back and play. And uh, we go three and 20 and the year ends. And during that time, bro, I was completely lost. Everything that I want, the podcast wasn't a thing really. It was a thing, but like December, like, bro, we had like 1200, 15, I don't know, 3000 followers in December. I didn't, I I didn't, I I didn't think the podcast was a thing. So now the girl I thought I was going to marry broke up with me basketball the one thing that my entire life i worked for completely shot and i was like bro i'm fucking lost bro i'm riding bro i was doing i was riding around doing uber and lyft like six seven eight hours a day just so i could be with someone because i felt so alone and i hated what was going on in my mind when i was by myself i couldn't even think like my, my my mind was all over the place so I would just drive Lyft and Uber just to have a conversation with a stranger in the back seat. And I would have I would have Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty playing in an AirPod. Like yeah. that's where I was at eight months ago. And then to think that all this has transpired, I'm like, bro, like think you know what I'm saying? Like I can't I can't do anything but be grateful and be thankful. But Jake and I had this conversation the other day, right? We're like, why, like, all right, we've had some success, right? And it's like, why haven't we reached, you know, the money yet? 
and like we feel like we're deserving of money it's like yo like there's people that do toxic bad things in this world and they make a lot of money and then there's people like us that are leaving a positive impact on the world and changing lives and bro i get messages from people like all, all day like yo you're changing my life thank you the, uh, strangers are coming up to me bro i go out in public like people notice me now it's crazy like yo aren't you zach from the journey you know <laughs> and uh and bro we, like i do all that right but yeah. this is this is like the catch it's like yo like god or the universe i i kind of use them both hand in hand like yeah. we we weren't supposed to have money during this this time period because this time period allowed us to struggle and eat shit and go through the ringer and really have like these emotions that the everyday person relates to yeah. all of our most viral clips on tiktok are bro ones are when we're talking about like how we're hurting how we're going through some shit how we went through a heartbreak how we went through that like because that's the shit that people can relate to that's the shit that the everyday person is going through the everyday person can't relate to Jake Paul. The everyday person can't relate to professional athletes, but they can relate to the to the to the average dude that's on the grind, bro, and 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 really fucking hurting and really struggling. So like during that time period, we're just like we're just pissed off and sad all the time. But it was the best thing for us because it built the platform. And now people are going to be able to listen to us when we are at like a, a different level and we are at one of the biggest podcasts in the world because there was a lot of people that have been with us from the jump. And then they see that like, yo, these are some real dudes. So now I value what they're going to say. Like when, 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 when our words are really reaching the masses. So like this whole thing, bro, like that's why I, I just think it's so silly to plan, bro. Like you make plans and God laughs and, God laughs. and, and, and there's, there's things that, that you, that you set your, your, your mind on and, 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 and you have this vision of something and man, tomorrow, like that plan could go to shit, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you really got it. You really just got to live in that present moment, man. And, uh, and yeah. And, 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 and then, like you said, like, bro, like, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm the most religious person or like, I'm this like God fearing man, you know, I'm, cause I'm not, I, I, yeah. I was never raised that way, whatever. But over this period of time, um, I've been a lot more open to 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 listening and, and speaking to God and 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 seeing the signs that that the universe puts in my in my life because there's too many things that that have gone just so so well that shouldn't have and things have just fell into place that made absolutely no sense and to think that they just happened on accident is uh I think that's more crazy than to say that there's there's someone else there's some higher energy steering this shit. I always love to think about it that way too. Like some people will question my religious beliefs and they'll say like, you know, why don't you just choose to believe in nothing? Like you really think everything happens uh, according to plan. I'm like, no, first of all, everything doesn't happen according to plan. I think there's some element of free will to it where we mm -hmm. all make our choices. But to think that everything just happened by accident, like that's that's an absurd thought to me. <laughs> Uh, and to buy into that, I would rather yeah. live my life believing something that other people think are crazy than die not believing in anything at all. I think believing in something yeah. gives us power. And, you know, just talking about belief, I I believe every word you're saying. And that's why I love watching you at work. Because I could just tell listening to you. I mean, this is the first time we're meeting, but I can just tell that you mean it. You mean every single mm -hmm. word that you say. And that's why I know that you're going to get there. I don't know when you're going to get there. I can't make a prediction. Right, when right, right. Get there. But yeah, you're the type of guy to me that isn't going to quit. And it's this yeah. strength that I feel from you. I feel it from your words. Like we're not even in the same room right now, but I can feel your words with me. Um, and that's a powerful thing. And I, I want to finish off Thank just you. talking about strength. Of course, dude, any single time. Um, where we get strength from. And, you know, we, you've talked about your mom a couple of times and mm -hmm. I saved her for the end intentionally because – I like talking about the most important things in our life towards the end of the conversation. Awesome. Once we've gotten some time to get to know each other. And, you know, one thing that I actually tried to structure this framework of the conversation around, um, is the book, the alchemist, because I know mm -hmm. you read it multiple times. And if yeah. anybody else has read it, you can actually go back and listen to some of the questions that I have. I tried to structure it like over half the questions today have been, based around direct quotes from the alchemist. So if anybody is like yeah. an eagle eye viewer of the alchemist, 
go back and try to pick that out for yourself. But I I did that for this one quote specifically from the alchemist and it's your eyes show the strength of your soul. And why I said that is because I know that you have the tattoo on your arm of the eye. And yeah, yeah, yeah. When you look at that tattoo, how does it give you strength? What emotions come up every single time that you take a look at it? And how does it keep you grounded? How does it keep you going even in the darkest of days? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this tattoo, I mean, bro, it means it means everything to me. Like every single piece of on this on this sleeve is like for my mom, you know? And like mm-hmm. this is literally a portrait of her eye. Um this is the the dog, the dog that we picked out, like Chowder, like me and my mom picked her out when I was in fifth grade, you know, like everything. I have 357 tatted right here. I've seen this time every single day since she died. <sighs> what, this is going to be 14 years this coming September, September 13th, 2009. So I've seen it every single day for 14 years, you know, so the list goes on of all the little pieces on here, but yeah, bro. It's just, it's just something that I can look at every day, you know, and remember that, you know, she's with me and, um, that I, that I have a why there's a, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in life that, that you can, you can just kind of go through the motions with, right. And, and, and a lot of people live their lives that way. They just kind of go through the motions. They, 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 they take the easy route, right. They kind of just cruise, cruise by. And, and the next thing you know, like, you haven't done much. Right. But like, for me, like, that's why I always say like the passing of my mom was a blessing in disguise because it gave me, it gave me a why it gave me a reason to, to want to go out and do something and make someone proud. So yeah, I, it's really, it's really something that if I had to go through it now at 26, I don't know how I'd be able to go through it, but the the fact that it happened to me at 12 years old and I was able to take that pain and take that hurt and really apply it to everything in, to, in my life. And man, it, it's just been, it's been the fire. It's been the fire that, that, that has fueled me this entire time with everything I've ever done. And it's something that has always made me feel different. It's made me, it's made me separate myself from the pack because when people complain about shit and people, you know, people say they have problems and I'm not, I'm not discrediting people's problems, but I'm like, for there were, there's a lot of things where it's like, yo, your problems aren't my problems. Like there's shit, there's shit that I've had, I've had some long sleepless nights where like I cried myself to sleep for months on end. Right. Like there, there's been a lot of conversations with God asking him like, why, why'd you take my mom from me? There was, there, there's been a lot of pain and, and and stuff that I still haven't accepted or fully moved on from, that it's 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 become who I am. Like like yeah. that's that's the reason I am who I am. So yeah, bro, that was a uh, yeah. It's just it's just something that, that it's going to be with me for the rest of my life, you know. And then like especially yeah. like this sleeve was like, yo, I want I want to dedicate something to her that um, that I could be proud of, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, this was. Uh, yeah, I love I love this piece, you know, like to yeah. start to finish, every single thing has something to do with her. So uh it's really cool and, and, and none of it makes sense, you know. A lot of people like they get like, you know, like theme sleeves that you can tell, like, oh, that's a theme. Like I have a dog numbers, <laughs> a cancer ribbon, flowers, a turtle shell, uh, a stack of books, you know, uh yeah. you know, a bunch of stuff up here. So and then I mean, hey, like this quote, like God gives the toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. Yeah. And that's a quote that I've lived by, man. Like God wouldn't give it to you if, if he didn't if think you could handle it. it. Yeah. But, I, but I like that, that it's not uniform. It's not all one theme because life's not all one theme. You know, life yeah. is an amazing coming together of all these individual parts to make mm-hmm. something that's beautiful in the whole. Um, I, I love hearing you talk about your mom and how she's just still present in your life and you're never going to let that go. Yeah. I, that means a lot to me to hear that you still have that bond. And, you know, the other part of the bond in your family is your dad. Um, yeah. I just want to talk a little bit about him to end things off. And I found this in a, it's a couple of words from your dad. And he's talking about your mom. And he says, hey, this is directed at your mom. You know, he's saying, 
thank you for being my beautiful wife and friend and sharing the joy of our lives. And he's referring to you. Uh, you told me life was for the living and we thrive to be the best we can in your honor. Angels and ladybugs are everywhere. I love you always. Your husband, Tommy. One of the most profound things I've ever had said to me while I was podcasting, doing all this, is especially in death, don't let one life turn into two. And what that means is when you lose somebody, don't allow someone who's living to feel like they can't go on uh, because they've lost that person and now they feel lost in life and they feel like they have nowhere to go. Just reflecting on you know all the years that you've been with your dad now, how important has his bond with you been to staying on that track and making sure that you never felt lost? And even if you did feel lost, he was always someone that you could turn to to make sure that you're getting back to being the best person that you could be. Yeah, 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 bro. Um, yeah, my dad and I have been through a lot, man, and we and we share we share a similar experience. And and I always felt I always felt worse for him because we don't get to choose who our parents are. Mm -hmm. You're just born, and then you have parents. Like he chose her to be like the woman that he spent the rest of his life with, and to watch her die the way that she did is like, as a grown man, I couldn't imagine what that what that feeling is like. But we've, yeah, yeah, bro, we, we've been through some shit, you know? Like, there there's a lot of nights where, like, he'd come downstairs crying. I'm 13, 14 years old. Him he, him crying, having panic attacks. Um, not not being able to, to accept the fact that she's gone, you know? And I had to be there for him. I almost took it better than him because, like I said, I was so young. Like, I really didn't understand the meaning of life, you know? I didn't understand how valuable that was. Like, yeah. and, then to and, to, and then to lose your wife at that, it's like, fuck. And then, and then, and then, and then, yeah, bro. Like our, our relationship for a while was a little weird. Like I was just so closed off and uh, it was my fault. You know, I wouldn't say it's my fault because like I did have to, like I went through that and, and it made me a certain way, but I was very closed off. I was, I, I, you know, but I, I was always a good kid. Right. But like we, we had our, 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 you know, our bumps in the road where like we would knock heads a lot and, but yeah, as I got older and then I was like, fuck, like he's not going to be here forever. You know, mm -hmm. like, like I could, I could, I could cry just thinking about like losing, you know, my dad now. So there's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been uh, it's definitely been tough, but I mean like us having that shared experience and uh, it's certainly brought us closer together. And then even this podcast, he, he said uh, he told Jake that, uh, he learned more about me on this podcast than he did in my 26 years of living, Wow, which is crazy. You know, it just like, it, it just goes to show you that like, I really don't talk about how I'm feeling. Like I never, I never was one to really speak about how I'm feeling or, or what's going on in my mind. Like I would always go out and put a smile on my face and, and try to, and try to act the part. But there was a lot of times that I would do that. And then I was really like, I was really battling some shit on the inside that nobody knew about. And, and when you're doing that, it, uh, it's, it's tough, bro, because, cause, cause you feel like, you feel like nobody's got me, you know, you feel like nobody's there and, uh, it, it's, it's a dark place. It's a dark place at times, especially when you're, when you're dealing with loss, but, but this, like I said, like this podcast, like it's, uh, it's gotten me closer with my dad. Like, and, and, and I'm bro, I'm just very fortunate that like he supports it. Like there's a lot of parents that could be like, Hey, like, that's not a job. That's not a career. That's not this, you know? But I told him, I'm like, yo, like, give me a couple of years. Like I'm going to buy you a house. Like, don't yeah. worry. Like I'm telling you, like, there's upside in this. Like there's some yeah. real high upside in this. Like, just, just trust me. Like, just trust me, bro. Like I got, like, I'm going to get you some shit in a couple of years. So yeah. Yeah, bro. I mean, like, bro. I love my dad, and I, I probably don't tell him enough. But like, we both know like how we how we how we feel for each other. But we're just both men, you know. what I'm saying like it's yeah. like that's just how we show. Like we have our way of showing love, and and yeah. uh, and that's just the way that's the way we do it, you know. Like you can't yeah. you can't you can't show love the way everyone else shows love to certain people, you know. what I'm saying like as long as that person knows how you feel about them, as long as you know that that person always has your back. And, and you know that like, you'll go to war with them. Like you will die for them. You'll, you'll do whatever for them. Like, as long as they know that it doesn't matter how you show it, 
but like as long as you guys are on the same page like that's all that matters so i think that's where i think that's really where our relationship is at you know that's just just how we are i love that i love everything about that uh i mean i mean this next question in all sincerity and like a real answer Mm -hmm. not just like a throwaway how are you doing i got you like how are you feeling bro i'm feeling good like uh i uh I need to, uh, I just need to get back on track with a few things. Uh, just as far as like, I really like, I've, I've, I've created good habits and then I fall off. Like we all do it, you know, like I have, I have good days where like, yo, I feel good. And then like, I fall off and then I make excuses, you know, but like mentally and, and, uh, spiritually and physically, I do feel good. Do I, do I have moments where like, I, I, I think about shit or like I, I get stressed out. Of course we all do, but like I can genuinely say that I, that I am feeling, uh, I am feeling pretty good. And uh, I, I'm really excited for like these next couple of months because I think, I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be a leap that, that happens. And we, we have a lot of stuff like that we're working on and, and bro, I'm just ready. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm anxious for, for like what's to come. Uh, I'm also trying to stay present and, 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 and remain grateful for, for what, for what we have so far, but yeah, I can truthfully say that, uh, yeah, I'm good, bro. I can't complain, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed. If, if, if I were to say that I was, uh, I was not, I'd be, uh, I'd be sounding pretty ungrateful because like I said earlier, like shit could be a lot worse. I don't, I don't have much to complain about. I feel you, man. I feel you. And like I said before, I, I feel it about you. Like it's gonna happen soon, sooner rather than later, and when it does, I'm gonna feel pretty damn lucky to have gotten this chance to to speak with you because, you know, like I said, I've been keeping track of your journey since <laughs> almost a year ago now, and to uh, to see the evolution that you've had, it's been quite the thing to see just from an outside perspective. I feel really lucky to uh, have finally met you today. Uh, yeah, thank to- you, bro. This was uh, this was good, bro. Like, like I, I. Uh... I can, I can genuinely like, I'm not a master of podcasting. Right. But like I've, I've, I've put some pain in this game. I've, I want, all I do is watch podcasts. Like that's my only form of media that I really consume. And like, bro, like you're good at this. Like this was, uh, this was fun, bro. Like now I can like, I'm going to like tell Jake, like, cause like, bro, like, I'm not going to lie. Like there's a lot of times like we get hit up, right. Like on emails, yeah. like, Hey, you want to come on our pod? And like, we've done a few and like, They've, they've been shit shows. You know what I'm saying? Like they've been shit shows. They have been like, they're just like, it's like just surface level BS questions, you know? And it's just like, and like for me and Jake, like we'll just sometimes do them to like get some clips, like get some personal clips, but uh, not like your email that you sent. I was like, yeah, like absolutely. I I always do them. I always do them, but uh, I, I can, I can feel some type of way after, but I can genuinely say, bro, like this was good. Like I, Jake, Jake would, uh, Jake would have fun like with you interviewing him like you like jake would put on a show for you like it's gonna be good so. i would love that i would absolutely love that that's uh highest compliment you could give me today <laughs> is that you're gonna pass yeah, nah, for real bro yeah. thank you uh, um last question for today it's the uh it's the question i make everybody answer so sure. it's open-ended uh and you can take it any direction that you want after everything that you've gone through everything that you've learned so far and, and you know hopefully many more lessons to come what have you learned about love Damn, what have I learned about love? Um, love, love is a tricky thing, and and love is a feeling that I don't know if I've truly ever felt it because there's no there's no way to put a put a price tag on it or or put a right or wrong on it, right? Like I think I think love is I think there's a lot of different forms of love, but um love is uh love is hard bro love is hard because when you when you get when you get your emotions involved and and you and you really pour into someone and you you're in a very vulnerable place you're in a place that uh you probably wouldn't want many people to see you in yeah. and uh when you love someone and and then they're not in your life anymore it's uh it hurts bro like you could go you could really go from knowing every single thing about a human being and, and being their best friend and sharing every moment with them and thinking you're going to spend the rest of your life with them. And in that same sentence, you can go right to not even knowing them and you guys are complete strangers. 
And that's, to me, that's fucking crazy. Like that at one point in our lives, like we were everything for each other. And now we're complete strangers. Like we've never met. And, uh, man, like, love, like, like that's, that's what love is, you know? And, and sometimes like, I think, I think a lot of the time we, we partner love and possession in the same sentence. Yeah. And that's not always the case. Just because you love someone does not mean that you have to be with them. Like you can love someone from a distance. You can always have love for people, but you don't always need them in your life because sometimes that person you love is the person that's going to hurt you the most. Sometimes the person you love is someone that is not genuinely good for you, yeah. you know? And sometimes you can't pick and choose who you love. You like, you just like, you love who you love. You can't help it. That's just something that, that's just something that uh, it's like an, un, it's like an untold unsaid thing, right? Like you just, you can't control how you feel sometimes. That's why you see like all the time, like these relationships that like people, people there, you know, they're not right for each other. You know, it's toxic. You know that they're going to end up fucking hurt, but they just, they, they, they can't get enough of each other because of that love, because of that, 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 that bond that they share. But you, I think you really have to, to know the difference between like genuine connection and comfortability with, with people, because I think a lot of people can mistake love for just being comfortable and not sharing a genuine connection yeah. and once you can find that person that you share that genuine connection with and every time you're with them time goes away and even on their worst days and your worst days you guys can still find a way to like to make it happen like that's what i'm still looking for so you know that that's kind of where i'm at with it you know i'm not really <laughs> I'm not really in a position right now to jump back into a relationship. I was, I was in two relationships back to back two and a half years and then three years. So I was, I was in relationships for the last almost five, five to six years. And man, like, I'll, I'll be honest, like you said, like, bro, I'm a little, uh, I am, I am a little scared to, to get back into a relationship because of, uh, because of that feeling that I went through, man. Like, bro, heartbreak, heartbreak is a fucking, Mm -hmm. Hurts. It's a roller coaster. Okay. Yeah, heartbreak is not a uh it's not a feeling that you ever want to feel again, but uh I've said it a thousand times. I think I think it's like one of your biggest teachers though in life and it can really it can either make you fold or you know, you can completely change your life with it. So, is yeah. Is that you you you've been through some heartbreak? No, nah, honestly not at that level. Uh it's mm. it's weird to say at 23. Um I've talked about it before. I don't. I don't think I've ever been in love. And to even say I mm. think I, I haven't. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's never really been anyone who's come across in my life that's been there long enough, where I feel this connection to them that I would genuinely do anything. I would move a mountain to be there mm. if they were hurt. I would run through the entire night to be there for them. Right, right, right. Um, and you know, when it comes to timing and everything like that, I keep telling myself like, oh, timing, like, you know, it'll happen when you least expect it and stuff like that. I don't know if I genuinely believe it though. Um, it's something that I've tried to reconcile a lot. And I think, especially over the past year, the way I've tried to kind of put it back in the <laughs> in the closet, put it back in the shed and just kind of put it in a dark place where I don't even have to think about it is I just dive into my work, whether that be, you know, in my day job or when I come home at night, like I'm working like 14 15 hours a day minimum and i just tell myself like oh, i don't have time for a relationship mm-hmm. like i i wouldn't even yeah, be yeah. good at love if i if i had the opportunity um yeah and i think a lot about how you know am i letting some of the best years of my life where i could have someone i could be in love with like pass by for the sake of you know foregoing it down the road and we talked about it before like tomorrow's not guaranteed so like what am i doing yeah. here like if i'm not going yeah. after today and trying to get it um it's uh, it's one of my biggest character flaws i think personally that I yeah but i don't think you can it. force it bro you can't force it you know like you really can't force it it's like uh, i felt like in my last relationship bro i was, I was with the, i was with the girl for three years and, and and now that i'm eight months removed from it bro it, it was forced like like, they, like we didn't we didn't share a genuine bond like we just like spent so much time together and like i took three years to get her and i i like a lot of times, bro, like we paint a picture about uh, a partner and, and, and we think 
that there's they're going to reach this potential that we set in our own minds of who we want them to be. Yeah. And they're just not that person. Like no, you can't change them. If you feel like you have to change them to fit who you are, that's not the right person for you. No. So like when you're in this position right now, bro, like, bro, we're, you're 23, I'm 26. We're on the grind, bro. We're trying to make it happen. You're working, you're doing podcasting on the, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's hard. Like, a, a female, a female, a relationship is a commitment. And, yeah. and if you, and if you are like a person that, that carries good morals and you want to treat someone right, uh, you need to be in the right position to be able to give and receive that love because it's not worth it. If, if you, if you got your own shit going on, you really haven't even figured yourself out yet. You don't have the time and energy to be able to pour into someone else the right way. And I, I would Hey, bro, if you run, you might go out and, and run into the love of your life. You don't know when it's going to happen. Like know. you have no idea, you know, but like yeah. right now I can genuinely say like, I'm not, I'm not searching for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not like, cause I just know the way my life is about to go, bro. Like I, I, I could move to Miami next week. You know, like I could be, I could be traveling all around. Like I'm not going to be, a, it's not feasible. So it's hard, yeah. bro. When we're in our twenties, it, bro, it's so hard. Like, like that's when I got in my first relationship, 20, my, my last relationship, 23 you know, and it ended like at 25, like going into 26, you know, and yeah. do I regret it? No, because at the, at the time, like you can't, you can't regret shit because at the time it was everything you ever wanted. So for you to look back and say like, I regret putting myself in that position. It's silly because in that, in that moment, you didn't regret it, right? You, you loved where you were at. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't say I would, I would change it because I, I, you can't because that's what I wanted at that point in time. But yeah. think about it, bro. 23, imagine you go two years with a female, two to three years with a female, and then boom, it ends. Yeah. And now you're like, yo, think about all the time I could have put into business, into other women, into my into my craft, into my, into my side hustle, in my passion, like time with friends, like time with the boys that I can never get back. Like, yeah. So it's tough, bro. So like, yeah, I wouldn't force it. I wouldn't force a thing, bro. Like, no, let, do do what you do, bro. Yeah. I always I always say, like, would the woman of your dreams be even be attracted to you right now? And if the answer is yeah. no, then you shouldn't be then you shouldn't be pursuing a female. No, and I like what you said there about regret because you can't regret it because that's what you wanted at the time. Yeah. When when you when you go through that, like, I, I have no idea what that feels like to get yeah. to that point where you're like two years in. And then it just comes down in an instant. It's just gone. But I, I don't even want to try to comment on what that would feel like to hurt. But do you think like you would even be the kind of guy you are today had that not happened to you? Like, is it transformative in a way? Or is it just something that like, you know, it's in your history and you either have to choose to embrace it for what it was or just kind of let it go, I guess. Yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, when when I got my heart broken, uh, I felt like I couldn't move, bro. I felt paralyzed. And over time, you slowly you slowly crawl out of that hole, and then and then and then you you have a you have a decision to make. You're like, yo, I'm gonna let this fold. You know, what I'm saying I'm gonna let myself fold and uh, and crumble from this situation, yeah. or I have this fucking flame lit under my ass right now that I can do whatever and pour, and pour all this anger and, and sadness and hurt into something. And then that's, that's the route that I chose, yeah. you know? So like I, I hit the gym hard every single day. I was like, yo, I'm going to take this podcast as serious as I can. I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying? Like everything, like it just made me like want, it made me want to be better. You know, it made me want to be better because I was like, Hey, like maybe if I was a better dude, like I would have never felt like this. And, and I never want to feel like this ever again. So yeah, I think I think heartbreak is certainly transformative. Um in regards to like letting go. I mean, bro, that that's hard. Like letting go of someone that you really you really poured your all into and 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 spent months together and spent years together and and you gave them everything and you felt like that was the person you're going to be with for the rest of your life and then boom, snap of a finger, they're gone. You you don't speak to them ever again. Like, yeah, bro, that shit's hard and it's hard to let it go. But you just got to, you got to understand like, Hey, like all these shits, relationships, friendships that, I mean, bro, they have seasons and, uh, 
sometimes they carry into that next season and sometimes that season ends and uh either way you have to be okay with it and you just have to accept it and move on and yeah. it's the only thing you can do if you if you're just stuck in the past and then just grieving over it like you're gonna you're, you're gonna end up in a really dark place and uh i was but i i got out of it you know and uh do you think do you think you fully uh, it let sucks go? bro no 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 i i still uh yeah, I still think about it probably every day. Every day? Every day. Yeah, probably every day since it's happened. I, I, I don't, not, not of like, I'm thinking about her and I want to, and I want to be sad and then I go lay mm. in bed, but like, I, like, it'll cross my mind. Like, bro, there, bro, there's times I'll wake up, bro. I forgot we broke up. I'm like, damn, I haven't texted her in a while. And I'll be like, fuck. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, bro. It's, uh, I mean, that's me, bro. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, like, I, I, I'm serious about like shit. Like, like when I feel for people, like I, like I, I said, like I'm, I'm too nice with forgiveness. Like I always give people the benefit of the doubt. Like I always still like, I'll never wish, I'll never wish bad on her. Um, I wish her nothing but the best. I, I, I hope, I hope she's happy, but um, I don't, I would, I don't think I would ever, I would never get back with her. There's no way. Yeah. 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 But it's uh. Yeah, bro. It's uh, everyone. Everyone takes relationships and breakups like totally different. You know, different. it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you said, you. Guys, I, I think talking about it and someone else is going to hear this part and it's going to help them. So yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, yeah.